Alright, Justin Thursday here. Uh, this is going to be a how-to mod. Carbon boot. The shell is guaranteed to last five years, supposedly. Seems like it will, but we all know the skins won't. Um, so, I don't like the way they are, personally. No forward flex. Too stiff. Uncomfortable with the thin liners. Um, I essentially stripped them down to their shell because I don't have the uh, resources to make my own skate shells, otherwise I'd just start from scratch right now. Um, just to strip them, all you're going to need is a razor blade. I use one of those titanium blades because they're super sharp. And a heat gun to melt the glue. Um, so, what is this? Carbon 1 white Kelso or whatever. I'm going to end up, or this is what I ended up with. And that's mine. It is carbon one shell with a Nike wrestling shoe, so it comes up to the top. I can lace it up all the way. Nim cuff, I could lace it up on those too, which I find will be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, Solomon Feinberg liner, best liners ever made. And then just carbon soles. First step, take your laces, buckles, soles, insoles, heel pads out, everything. Just get it down to the shell, everything that's stuck together here. Razor blade. This heel flap you see some people cut off, cut it off. Get up real close for you. There we go. Get right under those threads and just cut it down. All the way around. You get the idea. I'm gonna sit back down. Ha, in theory. There, yep. Peel it off once you get all that stitching ripped. Okay, that took long enough. One sheet. Carbon fiber heel. Now you can stop there if you just want a black heel, but. I say we keep going. Heat gun. Uh, you're basically just going to want to start at the bottoms where you can see it wrap around. Mine might look a little different because I always clean them up. I don't let the foam overlap the leather when I skate these stock. Um, but whatever. You can pull the foam off first if yours over overlaps the leather or Kevlar, whatever it is. Alright, let's see. Use my razor blade to start it off to get it peeled up. That part that I heated up just peels right off. Glue is wet. Alright, so once you get far enough, get about that much peeled back, you're going to have to cut this pull strap off, and then you can see that line right there, and you can see it. You have to cut that down so you can peel both sides off individually. So, raise the blade. Don't cut yourself. Just cutting the threads, not the strap itself, you can see. Uh, you just get right under there. buckle out of this lately, later, not lately, just sew or glue some velcro to it, and then that line right up the top there. If you want to reuse any of the material later on, you can, uh, so you can be more careful than I am. I'm cutting through the liner and everything, so it doesn't matter to me. 
also the razor blade isn't going to hurt the carbon fiber. It'll scratch it a little bit, but, you know. Nice little peel at the top. Keep heating. Didn't cut it all the way through. Because up in the cuff, there's this hard uh, material here. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's under the Kevlar leather stuff, and I guess that adds a little more stiffness to the cuff above the carbon, but in my opinion, that's what ruin it. ruins it, because the cuff doesn't move. There we go. Peeling apart there. You can see the top of the carbon fiber. Um, so yeah, just keep on keeping on with that. Just keep heating and pulling. Where that leather comes off here, I've had trouble getting the toe cap off because it's really glued in. There's actually like a plastic toe cap in there. You can hear it. Uh, I'm gonna just cut those threads right there under that. So I can pull it off in two separate pieces. right off back kind of ripped a little bit you can see the sorry excuse for a liner right there toe will flap up like that because it's got a bunch of different grooves on it and stuff but it's not hot enough Peel up. Find it easier to get the liner off if you actually separate the skin like that from the liner. And it just, it essentially just pulls out once you get that far. Toe's giving me trouble, so I'm gonna move back to the heel and liner area. Um, you're gonna want to heat up the shell again. But you can see how far we've gotten here. Skin's all folded around. <clears throat> Heating up again. Just all around the heel cup area, cuff, heel cup. Uh, probably even the bottom once we get there. We we'll start at the top and go down. But it'll slowly be peeling the liner away from the shell. I'll right, we'll see if that did. Peeling right away. You hear that ripping sound? Look at that. Don't burn yourself on the carbon, it gets hot. dark but there's nothing in there now yeah great success that's what I mean hold its shape you could theoretically reuse it somehow if you have like a 9, maybe you could put it on a size 9, you maybe you could put it on like a 7 ballot. Possibilities are endless, but there you go. Carbon fiber.
Really, it's like two-thirds carbon fiber. You can see that white. They use a lot of fiberglass. Don't hate on them, it still works, it's solid. Um, and then there's all this foam in here you can kind of see. That goes under the liner, micro, fake, suede, whatever it is. Um, you can kind of scrape that out with a flat razor blade. Um, I like to remove the frame bolt T-nuts because I slide them out a little quarter of an inch. I don't like my foot to do that so much. You're going to have a lot of uh, leftover glue on the inside and outside of the shell. You can heat it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be too hot. You can see that stuff on the top of the cuff area. A little bit of heat. And you can just kind of wipe it right off with your thumb. Oh, let me get the frame there. You can see it just coming right off. So that's clean enough for right now. Let's see that. You can just use a flat razor blade to scrape the bottom. I'm gonna do right here. Clean enough. It's flat. You get the idea. I'm gonna talk about cuffs now. I like to use NIM cuffs. They're simple, they're cheap, they're symmetrical, you can switch them, whatever. Um, these are the old ones with the small little buckle protectors. I got some newer ones now that are awesome. give you an idea. But here's what we're going to do. If you know what skate you like, you know what kind of cuffs you like, you can grab that skate and measure where their cuff bolt is and possibly even use that same cuff. Salmons are a little harder with the uh, Synergy stabilizer bar on the back, whatever it is. Um, I couldn't find a ruler. I got a framing square. I'm going to measure from the bottom of the sole plate to the center of the cuff bolt. We got three and a quarter inches. Um, I use a thinner heel pad in my carbons than the stock Solomon sole, so I'll just go three inches. It'll be easy. Take your newly stripped carbon fiber shell. Get preferably the stock sole plate since it's perfectly flat, all of that. I'll use seven sole plates or something. Place that in there like it would be. And then measure up. My shell's rocking a little bit because it still has those rivets in the receptors, so just try to figure it out. Really good tutorial. Just try to uh, keep it even if you can, essentially. Sharpie. We're just doing height right now, so. Wow. Uh, three inches right there. Three inches. And then you can kind of sight it. Look on either side to see if you like where your lines are. Make mine a little darker. Now, whatever cuff you're using, place it on there. Keep in mind you're going to need a thin liner, like a jug probably will not fit in these unless you get a size or two bigger carbon fiber shell. Um, so keep in mind if you're going to use razors cuffs, they may be too tall of a cuff for say a Salmon or a Pacifica 310 liner, which is also not terrible for this type of skate. So you're going to have to kind of sight this part from the bottom, it's a little tricky. Um, line your cuff up with those lines you got there. Something like that. Make sure it's tight to the back of the shell. All that. Take your Sharpie. Just get in the hole and mark vertically so you know front to back where it needs to go. Alright, um, cuff bolts. I normally use the razors ones, the old school ones, not the adjustables, because you're going to be able to drill these in and they got these edges on here that you're going to pop them in and tighten them and they'll be pretty stuck into the carbon fiber. Um, 
they do tend to lo loosen up over time, as you've heard or may have heard about the carbon twos, um, to where people can't tighten them or change their cuffs anymore. Um, what I do is I use what's called a Forstner bit. Let's see, what size is this? Three eighths. So that'll give it enough tolerance to get in there real tight. It's a flat bit with a little tip on there so you can drill a perfect hole. Um, real even, real sharp. Wood bits kind of splinter the carbon fiber and will essentially make it weaker around your cuff bolt. Um, I'm just going to show you some other ones that I've done. That right there, it's just wedged in there really tight. But, um, yeah, I also, while I got this out, I'm not going to mod the other shell right now because honestly I don't know what, what I want to do with it yet. I'm going to experiment with some other cuffs and other skins and stuff. But this one here, I actually cut the carbon fiber down a good deal lower. Um, what I found is I got the same kind of pain that you people get with other carbon skates is that the carbon dig, it's too high. It digs into your ankle and your leg. Um, and also, it holds the cuff in place too much. You don't get a lot of flex out of it. I like my skates to move with my ankles. So you lower that down, you get more flex, a little more comfort. Okay, bolted some NIM cuffs on here, just to show you. You'll see that gap there. That's because the first time I did these, I didn't cut the skin down like this. I had it going all the way up so I could lace it up. Later on, decided I liked it like this. So, that's that. And it's it's on pretty tight, it's good. You get, which you normally don't get with most of the USD carbon, Deshi carbon, is a lot of forward flex. You also get back flex like that. Essentially a V-cut without cutting your cuffs. You get that toe plane, which supposedly helps you jump higher. Works for me, I don't know. All right, skins. Um, I had these Adidas Copenhagen's for about two years, wore them every day. The soles ended up just falling off. Um, liked them so much, decided to make skates out of them. These were the first ones I did. Um, I honestly don't know the best method for this. I've tried different things. Um, it seems like you could boil them, which would loosen up the glue, heat them up, but that might mess with the leather. And uh, I just use hot glue to put them on because I change them so much. Um, usually that holds them on well enough along with the carbon sole being bolted on. I haven't had any sole uh, skins lift up on me, but the this is a size 7 USD carbon shell. These were size 6.5 Adidas. Took me forever to stretch them out and then they ended up looking kind of silly because they were stretched out. Um, I would recommend going up about one size, maybe two. Um, for the shoes that you put on the shell, like an 8 Adidas, a 9 Adidas might work better. Um, I might try that soon, but they fit on pretty well now. These are ones I normally glue on. You can also actually um, sew fabric, like basically make an outline of the bottom sole so that you can remove them. Um, that's how I have some other ones that I'll show you off here in a bit. So naturally they fit on pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Favorite liners. Solomon liner, so that's what I use in these. And I use a Rems heel pad. Um, Pacifica or whatever USD ones are garbage, in my opinion. <clears throat> Anything else is too tall, um, and it actually pushes <clears throat> your heel into the carbon fiber shell in a really awkward way, and that's why I think a lot of people have heel pain. Um, so a good thin heel pad seems to sit, gets your heel to sit in there really well. And the Solomon liner is just absolutely perfect for this shell. Um, so, toss that away for now. This is another complete one I have. Just a Solomon ST8 liner, I believe. Um, I actually used a Valo TV1 skin. They were size seven. I had to sew up the back to get them to fit on. I had to sew up the toes to make them fit tighter because they're for plastic skates. <clears throat> and uh, I sewed a piece of fabric on the bottom so that these skins are actually replaceable, which is, I think, the most ideal. It's easiest to get them on and off and whatnot. I used the black straps from the Kelso Carbons. I just screw it right onto there. 
and you can actually take a drill, screw off that rivet, and you can reuse these on the one side. Um, I didn't use any of the cloth, I just took pliers and I pinched the square ring here onto the metal. And that's what I got going on there. So I just screw that to that side of the boot <clears throat> and just screw the strap to that side. I literally drill it right to the carbon fiber. Um, this should be like the very last step you do. Make sure you have your skins and your cuffs on. Uh, that way you know where you actually want your straps. Heat molding obviously is cool with carbons, but you don't get a lot of precision with it. With this, what you can do, take your heat gun, and if you know that you have pressure points wherever, like I've got them here and here on the inside and outside, I literally just heat up those points, put my liner in, and stand up in them. Yeah, that way I'm not heating up the whole thing and it's moving around or whatever. I just deal with the points that are actually giving me problems. Yeah, this has been a Thursday Customs how-to mod tutorial. Level, probably somewhat difficult, I don't know. Difficult. Time consuming, that's for sure. Um, more than worth it in my opinion. It's all I've been skating for about the last six months now. Um, and yeah, you'll get your shells that actually last you that five year USD warranty guarantee. Because you know the skins and liners aren't. Peace out!